Welcome back, Odoers. My name is Jose Ignacio. In this video, we're going to be learning how the admin department of a prominent furniture reseller uses Odoo to function in their day-to-day -day business. As you may know, digitizing a company has a strong impact on its productivity and profitability. It's going to save them hours when it comes to maintaining, locating, and updating documents. And it also makes compliance easier, as not having backups of original documents can create serious consequences. It also increases flexibility, making remote work possible. And on top of that, it reduces their environmental footprint. Typically, companies receive their documents, bills, letters, all of that stuff is what I mean by documents, by email or traditional mail. Once received, the admin department manages them by dispatching them to the right people. So enough chit chat, let's go look at how Odoo can help simplify all of that. So we're going to start off on the documents app. On the left hand side, you'll notice we have a ton of different workspace folders and the ability to sort them by tags or by what a document has been attached to. When I receive a doc, I just select upload in the top left corner to load the document into my Odoo database. I can also even select one or multiple documents just by clicking on this little circle up in the top right corner of each of these docs. Now I can even open a folder and then drag and drop a doc from the sidebar into a different workspace folder if I needed to move it. Like going into marketing. Let's assume that we want to move this NetSuite uh, picture over here. That's how you do it. We're going to leave that alone. Now from here, I'm going to select one of the existing files to show you the document preview window. And what we can do with the document. So let's select the all workspace and let's open up the sample NDA PDF because it is a document. Now when this file preview opens, there are a few different options on the right panel. We can actually see icons for downloading and also we can even replace, lock the file and split the file. There are also a few different options to change a name, assign a contact, change the owner, as well as reassign the workspace, see which signature template is assigned to and a space to assign tags as well. And then lastly, we also see some different actions available for the document. We can create a task, we can sign the document, and we can even deprecate this document at the very bottom. As you can see, Odoo keeps everything in one place for us, all on this panel here. Now to be able to receive documents via email, Odoo allows you to have different email aliases. So for example, for the finance team, I have the upload by email option enabled, and I set the email alias to finance at whatever domain that we have over here. So to check that out, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. You go up to configuration and shares and emails. And there's the finance team right there. And as you can tell, upload by email, checked off. And there's our custom one that I talked about. It's finance at admin2.odoo.com. Now, once you have that, all of that works and attachments sent to this address are automatically saved under the right workspace for the right department. An email from a vendor could be forwarded to this address or to make my life even simpler, I can share this email address with the vendor directly. Right now, I think I should go show you my inbox to see how that email alias works. So I'm going to send an email with an invoice that I received. So let's select Compose over here. And it's going to go to that alias I talked about earlier. And the title is Invoice. And let's attach that right there. Let's see where we're at. We got to go find that file. Sorry about that. Bear with me. Perfect. And we'll send it. Now, once that we do that, we can go back to our Odoo tab and see the invoice. So here we are back inside of our documents dashboard. We're going to switch over to the finance workspace folder. And would you look at that? We're going to open up our FreshBooks invoice. Voila, there it is. Now for invoices and docs you receive by snail mail, you're going to need to scan them. Don't you worry though. Scanning doesn't need to be done one by one. You can actually scan documents inside of batches. Just make sure your scanner device is connected to your database via the email alias and you should be good to go. So right now, let's actually click out of this document by selecting the X in the top right corner. And after making sure that we're inside of the finance workspace folder, we're going to open up our mails underscore inbox PDF over here. Now I have a question for you all to ponder. What if you batch scan some documents, but they serve different purposes or are meant for different departments? And that's no problem. We can actually use the split tool to separate and aggregate the pages accordingly. Then we can send them to the correct department. As you'll see inside of a moment, the document can be split and different actions can be selected for the resulting documents. So first, I'd either click on this split PDF button up at the top or select the scissors over here if I wanted to do that. Doing so actually reveals something else. It takes us to a different page. And over here, we have a few different options and we notice that it consists of different bills and letters. We can click on one page for a preview by selecting it right there 
and even scroll through. And we can also see the rest of them as well using our little arrows over here. But let's jump back to see all the pages again right now. Because from here, I'm going to click on our scissors because we need to cut this right here. So first, I'm going to select between pages four and five. That's its own little thing right there. And that's to rejoin them because this is one bill. I want to make sure those pages are together. We'll go ahead and leave the other play, play, the other pages split as they are. And you know what? I'm also going to click on this check mark for page six over there, just to deselect it from the batch and create vendor bills for the rest. So how do we do that? Well, we just select the create bill button up at the top, and boom, just like that, everything is done. And I'm going to send the last letter for further review later. So to do that, I actually want to select it. And then I want to actually move it to inbox right there. Perfect. Now let's hop over to the accounting app and I'm going to check out those bills that we just created. All right, now let's hop over to the accounting app and check out those bills that we just created. So we're going to go over here into the accounting dashboard. And from this dashboard, you want to select vendors up at the top and then bills. Let's find the one for Google over here. Take a quick look. And we can see that Odoo automatically created a draft vendor bill for us over here. And it also attached the PDF to the record. Now when I click reload AI data over here, Odoo's artificial intelligence reads the PDF and extracts any information to fill out the fields on the vendor bill if they're missing. Now keep in mind that this will use tokens each time a bill is created from a document. These tokens can be purchased through the Odoo website. Now that the data is populated, everything is accurate over here. We just confirm the bill. And just like that, we're done. So right now we just saw how Odoo handles different documents received by mail or email and how easy it is to create vendor bills from those documents. But wait, there's more. Managing contracts is also part of an administrative department's daily task. And with the integrated Odoo sign app, documents can be digitally signed in no time at all. So let's head back over there so I can show you what I mean. So in our case, HR needs to send a job contract that needs to be signed. So to handle that, we're going to jump into our documents application right there. And we're going to be inside of the internal workspace folder over here and open up the employment contract PDF. Now in the bottom right corner where it says actions, got to sign it. And so select that sign option. Now here I have the option to drag and drop a few different fields from the left hand side of the screen. We're going to start with name for employee name and put that towards the left hand side. And I'll show you why in a second. Going to put it a little bit to the left. And there's not one for address, but there is one for text and an address is text. Okay, so now that you've done all of this, I need to basically resize them. So to expand the fields to fit the blank areas in the document and make it look clean, I just have to drag this little black arrow over towards a really long name. Maybe in the future you have a really long date. I don't know what year you're filling this out in. And massive address field. And once that we've reached our desired size and length, we can move on. I also realize this is an employment contract. They almost always ask for initials. So we're gonna put initials bottom right. And notice when I do that, it's going to ask me which person am I using for responsible. And in our case, we can select customer, company, employee, standard. In our case, we're going to pick customer. And then we're going to add it all pages right there. And look at that on each page. Now we have it, including the very third page. Okay. And lastly, we need to add the signature as well as the date field. I'm going to make this signature one kind of big too. Once again, I already told you that the date is also going to be a big long one. Now we're cooking. All right. That was pretty easy. Actually, in fact, it was amazing. All right. So let's send this out by clicking on send up here at the top. And we need a customer right there. So I'm going to type in my very real email, odorules at gmail.com. Oops. Small little doopsie. Forgot to create it gmail.com there we go perfect all that is done hit send and we're on our way let's go look at that and sign this thing so this is what the customer will see first you open up the email and then you click on sign document button then once that you're inside of here you're going to see this document inside of your little signing area now when we select them notice it starts to auto populate some stuff but we're going to put our actual name and not the email when we click on date Auto populates. Address doesn't. So let's remind them that we are in Buffalo. Okay, now we need our initials, if you recall. And when we click that, we have a nice little pop up here where we can do our own little auto signature by just typing it in. And since it's better handwriting than mine, we will use it. We're going to sign them all because I don't read contracts over here. 
And then finally, here we are at our employee signature, where we're going to do the same thing and just not read, just to move this along. And we're all done right there. So when all the fields are filled out, I can actually click on validate and send completed document. And then it starts the process of sending this over to Odoo's magical servers. And once that this finishes, you'll notice that we have the option to view the document itself. But I'm also going to get a copy of the signed contract in my email. So I'm just going to go check that out later. Right now, though, let's go back to Odoo so I can show you what it looks like over there. So let's hop on into our documents application and internal workspace. We're already there. Would you look at that, Odooers? It's our completed and signed employment contract. We have everything there, including our nice legitimate initials, including the dates. Perfect. Now, Odoo sign is just one of the many possible actions that we can use for our files. We can also create tasks from a document request approval. Everything is possible. So let's see that in action and go back in there. So I'm starting out again inside of the documents app, inside of the internal workspace. We're going to select our video Odoo documents file over here. And if we would like to, you'll notice that the create a task action is actually at the bottom right corner. So let's actually click on that. So inside of here, it takes us to a separate page where I can create a task card and assign it to a project. I'm going to select a random project right there. After that, you can also add in any information like a milestone, an assignee, customers, deadlines, tags, you name it. If you wanted to, you can also add subtasks as well. But right now, let's follow the breadcrumbs back over to documents. And in addition to the standard action options, you can actually create other actions for documents by going to configuration, actions, selecting new in the top left. So from here, I'm going to create a new action with the following settings. So we're going to select schedule activity. Please, just because. So under the conditions tab that we're in right now, we need a related workspace. You need to select this first, by the way, or else you won't have any of your pre done templates down here if you would like to use them. So for ours, oops, I forgot you search via what you want inside of a template. So there it is. And then after we finish with that, we want to go over to our actions tab. Now inside of here, we have move to workspace, we're going to move it over to marketing right there. And we also need to enable one of these options, which is schedule activity at the very bottom down there. And once that we did that, you notice that we have other options like what type of activity it's going to be an email right there. Then once that we're done with all of this, because we're actually done, we don't have to touch anything else right there. I'm going to manually say by selecting my little cloud icon right there. And now this new schedule activity, please action will be available for any documents that are in my internal workspace and contain the presentation tag. So once that I click schedule activity action on a doc, it will move it to my marketing workspace and schedule an email to do activity. So let's jump back over to documents, make sure we're an internal, I'm going to select one of these presentations right there. And we're going to click an action, which is schedule activity. You'll notice right there. And then once that we select that, boom, we see that the presentation was moved because if we select marketing, oh, oh, doers. There it is right there. As I'm sure you know, going paperless and fully digital is the new norm. And as you just saw with Odoo, it could not be easier. To learn more about the apps that we saw during this flow and many others, make sure to check out the rest of our e-learning videos. Thanks for watching. And before I let you go, I'd like to give a special thank you to Tim. You've been great, brother. See you on the flip side.